Good morning friends I hope everyone is doing well I request everyone to watch my videos in a sequence for better understanding we have discussed that instructions are classified into three types one is data transfer instructions data manipulation instructions and program control instructions in the earlier videos I have discussed about the data transfer instructions and data manipulation instruction so in this video I want to discuss about the program control instructions the program control instructions are branch jump skip call and written instructions the branch instruction can be represented with an opcode as br okay jump instruction can be denoted as jmp and skip instruction can be denoted as skp call instruction can be denoted as call only and written instruction can be denoted as rtn so these are the various opcodes for the program control instructions so let me discuss about the branch instruction okay now as we said earlier if you have an instructions instruction 1 instruction 2 instruction 3 instruction 4 like that is there and you the e instruction 1 let's take that it is starting from 150 instruction 2 is is there in the location 151 instruction 3 is there in the location 152 instruction 4 is there in the 153 address location and let's assume that this instructions 1 2 3 4 are executing in sequence whenever the instructions are executing we will have address register these are the special purpose registers and we have a program control register and we have an instruction register what these registers will consist of the address register consists of the address of the current instruction which you are executing let's take that i am executing instruction one then address of that one will be stored here and the program controller will store the address of the next instruction so if instruction 1 is executing the address of the instruction 2 which is 151 will be stored here whereas address register will consist of 150 and instruction register consists of the instruction which you are executing currently. So address register consists of address of the current instruction program controller consists of address of the next instruction instruction register consists of the instruction which you are executing currently okay now as we said earlier once the instruction one is finished we will execute the instruction two then instruction three then instruction four in a sequence now once the instruction one is completed what will happen this instruction two will be executed this will consist of address 151 and this will consist of address 152 and it will consist of instruction two once this instruction 2 is executed then instruction 3 will be executed so instruction register will consist of instruction i3 and this will consist of the address of instruction 4 and this will consist of address of the instruction 3 i will fetch the instruction decode it execute it then what will happen once i perform the execution of the instruction then it will consist of the address sorry instruction 4 it will be there and it will have the address of next instruction let's take that we have sequence of instruction the next address is 154 and the address of this inst current instruction is 153 okay so this is the way the execution will happen if you are executing the instructions in sequence now what will happen when we execute the instruction which a branch instruction let's take that the branch instructions are classified into two types one is conditional branch we have conditional branch and another one is unconditional branch instructions are there the branch instruction is classified into two types one is conditional branch and another one is unconditional branch now what is conditional branch whenever suppose let's take it bz r1 is there let's take that and some address location 2000 is there okay now what will happen in the conditional branch instruction the conditional branch instruction this is bj 
Okay, what is meant by this BZ is that you can ask me, sir, you are representing branch instruction as BR, but here you have written as BZ. What is this? This branch, this BZ means branch if zero. Are you able to understand? Branch if zero. Meaning is that the R1 is a register. If R1 register consists of value 0, then it will go to the target address location 2000. If not, it will not go to the address location 2000. It's simple like if and else. If condition is true, some statements will be executed. Else, some other statements will be executed. Am I right or wrong? Similarly, if the register R1 consists of value 0, then it the next instruction it will execute is the instruction which is there in the address location 2000. If R1 consists of value other than 0, then it will execute the next instruction, not the instruction which is there in the 2000 location. So, meaning is that the branch or the condition is failed. Okay. Whereas, unconditional branch, we does not have any conditions. Okay. Directly, we will execute like branch 2000. Here you will not check any condition, always this one, it will execute the next instruction as instruction which is there in the 2000 location. Are you able to understand? Here you does not have any conditions, okay. So now I hope you have understood. Then what will happen? If it is branch instruction, let's take that simply. This instruction 3 is consists of this instruction branch if 0 r1 2000 then what will happen now we will discuss okay first we will discuss the conditional branch then we will discuss the unconditional branch if instruction th 3 consists of once you decode the instruction then you will understand what the instruction is consists of then you have understood that branch uh, g if 0 r1 2000 is there Okay, then what will happen? When you are executing this instruction I3, it will instruction register will consist of I3 and the address of that instruction is 152 will be there in the address register and the address of next instruction will be 153. Am I right or wrong? So if branch if 0 instruction is, is happened, let's take that R1 is having value 0. Then what will happen? The condition is true. If the condition is true, what is the target address? 2000. Then what it should do is that it should go to the address location 2000. Let's take that in main memory. Let's in 2000 address location, you have some I100 instruction. Some instruction is there. Okay. Then what is the meaning? Once you executed instruction 3, you are supposed to go to the address location 2000 and execute the instruction which is there, which is I100. Okay, so what is the program controller should consist of once this instruction is executed because it should not fetch the next instruction which is there in 153. Then the program controller will consist of 2000 because the next instruction to be fetched is from 2000 location. So the program controller will consist then it will go to the because the program controller should have the value what instruction you need to means address of the next instruction you should execute. Once this instruction is executed, program controller will be modified to 2000. Once it is modified to 2000, then only you can fetch the instruction which is there in the address location 2000. Okay, then instruction register will consist of 1000. Are you able to understand? Is it clear? Suppose let's once you fetch this instruction, once you fetch this instruction, let's take that there is no recall written or anything is there, then we will not discuss. With the written, I will discuss once you fetch this instruction, what will happen. So I hope you have understood the branch instruction. Is it clear? If it is branch, unconditional branch, if it is there, similarly. If it is unconditional branch, you will not check the condition. Directly the next instruction will be the instruction which is there in the address location 2000. So I hope you have understood about the branch instruction. Similarly, the jump instruction also, you will have ZMP some target location. So same way it will be executed. Are you able to understand? 
then we will discuss about the skip instruction this is very interesting one so let me discuss about the skip instruction in i3 instruction you have a skip instruction okay now what will happen let's take that when you are executing you have i4 instruction i5 instruction is also there just for explaining you the skip instruction okay then when you are executing the instruction skip which is the instruction number i3 then what is the address register will consist of address register will consist of 152 program controller will consist of in address 153 and instruction register will consist of the instruction i3 okay now you have fetched this instruction decoded the instruction and executed the instruction once you executed the instruction you came to know that it is a skip instruction if it is a skip instruction what is the meaning is that whatever the next instruction is there the next instruction is i4 you should not execute the i4 you skip one instruction so the meaning is that you should next instruction should be executed as i5 i hope you have understood skip means skip one instruction so next instruction is i4 you will not execute it and you will execute the instruction i5 so then what is the program controller should consist of once this i3 is executed then the program controller should not consist of 153 it should consist of 154 then only it will be fetched once it is fetched then address register will consist of 154 and program controller will be modified to 155 because the next instruction you have to fetch it is 155 are you able to understand is it clear so if it is a skip instruction it will not execute the next instruction it will skip it and after that it will start executing the instructions so i hope you have understood what is a skip instruction now we will discuss about the call and return instructions we can call this one as a subroutine let me discuss this call and return combinedly let's take that you are executing some instructions instruction 1 instruction 2 instruction 3 is there in the instruction 1 or sorry in the instruction 1 itself let's take that you call some other function okay and then what will happen it's like a function call that's what i am telling it is a subroutine now in a functions what will happen when you call a function you will the program controller will go to the current corresponding function okay and it will execute all the statements which are there in the function and then it will come back am i right or wrong so similarly what will happen in the subroutine we will discuss with the help of call and return instructions suppose let's take that here you have the call instruction then what will happen let's take that this address is 100 101 102 okay and this address is some 200 201 202 203 and you have a call instruction here while executing this instruction meaning is that what the program controller will consist of program controller will consist of 101 because once you fetch the instruction i1 the instruction register will consist of i1 and the address register will consist of the address 100 now once you executed the instruction you came to know that it is a call some location okay then what will happen then the program controller while it is executing it will have the value 200 because it should go and execute that instruction is it clear so 2000 location it will be there once it fetched that instruction okay which is there in the address location 200 the address register will consist of value 200 and program controller will have the value 201 and instruction register will consist of the instruction which is there in the let's take that here it is i8 i9 i10 i11 is there then instruction register will consist of the instruction i8 then what will happen once you call that subroutine you will execute all the instructions in it then 
you will return back to this instruction i2 is it clear are you able to understand it or not it is simply like a functions a function call is happened then it will execute all the statements which are there in the function and then it will return back so this return statement will be useful for you to come back to the next instruction after this one okay and call instruction will be useful for you to go to the subroutine so i hope you have understood all the branch instructions i will discuss about the call and return in much detail in the next video so i have discussed the basics of the call and return and i even discussed detailed about the branch jump and skip instruction so i hope you have understood all the instructions which are there in the program control instructions if you have any doubts related to this video feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours thank you for watching my videos have a nice day